In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I came up with this riff. started if you want to learn how to play neo soul guitar i've written a free guide called neo soul guitar the ultimate beginner's guide head down to the description to grab your free copy let's get started with the lesson this chord progression is in the key of a flat and we're starting off with a four five one sort of progression so that's d flat major seven e flat seven and then an a flat major nine for the d flat major seven and for the e flat seven chord I'm using drop two voicings, and that's where we take in a four note chord, the second highest note and drop it down an octave. So why don't you take a look and have a listen to the voicings that I used for those chords. And then of course, it wouldn't be Neo Soul without some cool embellishments and hammer-ons and pull-offs on top of our chords. So we're gonna repeat the chord progression again, but we need a chord that's gonna lead us very nicely into that D flat major seven. I played an A flat seven chord. This is a secondary dominant chord. A secondary dominant chord is where we have a target chord. So the target chord here is D flat major seven because we wanna go there. We play a dominant seventh chord, a fifth above it. So a fifth above D flat major seven is A flat and we play it as a dominant seventh chord. So we play an A flat seven and that creates a lot of tension and leads us very nicely back into that D flat major seven. So take a listen to how the A flat seven sounds in the chord progression. And as you'll see, I added a little bit extra in there as well. I played a little run up the A flat major scale just to create a bit of movement and to make the riff sound a little bit more exciting. So take a listen. Now, as I said, we're gonna repeat that chord progression, that four, five, one, except we're not playing a four, five, one, we're playing a four, five, six. We're resolving to the six chord rather than the one chord here. So we're playing D flat major seven, E flat seven, and we're going to F minor seven. So here are the chord shapes I used for those chords. Now with the E flat seven chord, I used a few different inversions, just varies the chord progression up a little bit. Now to give it that Neo Soul flair, of course, I added a few hammer-ons and pull-offs on that F minor seven chord. So take a listen to what I did there. Now that's the final main chord in the chord progression, but we're gonna throw some spicy chords in to lead us back into the start of the riff, that D flat major seven. So as I said earlier, previously I played an A flat seven chord as a secondary dominant, but a common extension that we can use on the A flat seven chord is a flat nine. This creates a lot of tension and a bit more of a jazzy sort of sound. Now the cool thing about the dominant seven flat nine chord is that if you drop the root note, so if we take the root note away from our A flat seven flat nine chord, we're left with a diminished seventh chord, specifically a C diminished seventh chord. So take a listen to the A flat seven flat nine, and then take a listen to it again with the root note stripped away where I play a C diminished seventh. The really awesome thing about diminished seventh chords is that you can keep playing them up and down the fretboard in increments of three frets. The C diminished seventh chord here in this case is on the third fret. We can move up to the sixth fret, the ninth fret, the 12th fret, you could go down as well three frets each time and we've got the exact same chord just in a different inversion so i take advantage of that in this little passing chord section at the end of the chord progression first of all take a listen to the different options we have for diminished seventh chords and i use the a and c diminished seventh chords here and remember we're using this to the same effect as an A flat seven chord. Okay, it's sort of like, like we're playing an A flat seven chord without the root note. Okay, so it has the same effect. So we're playing those two diminished seventh chords and then playing an A flat seven to lead us back into the start of the chord progression or the riff again. So take a listen. So, quite a theory intensive lesson. I hope you enjoyed it though. I hope you've got some cool new ideas to put into your playing. If you enjoyed this chord progression and wanna write chord progressions just like this, check out my book, Chord Charisma 2.0. You can grab the first two chapters for free. Those first two chapters are gonna show you how to write awesome sound and chord progressions. And if you get the full version of the book, you're gonna learn some really awesome techniques like the ones I covered in today's video on top of how to borrow chords from other keys, cool substitutions, reharmonization methods, loads of really awesome stuff in there. So if that sounds like your thing, definitely grab a copy. You will not be disappointed. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.